Hello viewers, today in this session we are going to discuss the definition of negotiable instruments. Also we shall be discussing various kinds of negotiable instruments and a few amendments which have taken place after 2006. This pertains to unit 4 of the Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. Let us study the negotiable instrument and before we do so, let us try to understand these two terms, the negotiable and instruments. Negotiable means the quality of transferability by delivery or by endorsement and delivery. Instrument means a written document by which a right is created in favor of some person. Therefore, negotiable instrument means a written document which is freely transferable and which creates a right in favor of some person to receive some money. Like we can tender a currency to another person and entitle him to purchase the goods or services through that legal tender of money, negotiable instrument does the same thing without using money but only uh, using a legal instrument through which a person is entitled to that service or goods. Let us take the definition of section 13 under the Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. A negotiable instrument means a promissory note, bill of exchange or check payable either to order or to bearer. Now, in this definition, what a negotiable instrument does is not discussed, but it merely gives the three categories of kinds of negotiable instrument. To state over here, even the traditional negotiable instrument like Hundis will be covered in Negotiable Instrument Act 1881. These hundis or the traditional means of negotiable instrument are governed by their own um, traditional usage and custom, but wheresoever there is no clarity regarding their usage, then the negotiable instrument act shall be resorted to. The first and foremost negotiable instrument which is discussed under the definition of section 13 is promissory note. The promissory note is defined under section 4. A promissory note is an instrument in writing, not being a bank note or a currency note, containing unconditional undertaking signed by the maker to pay on demand or at a fixed or determinable future time a certain sum of money only to or to the order of a certain person or to the bearer of the instrument. That means that a promissory note is a legal instrument which is in writing. It is containing an unconditional undertaking that is a promise to pay a certain sum of money to a certain person at a particular date and which can be represented by that pay himself or through another person who is the bearer of the instrument. Now with this we come on to two important persons in the negotiable instrument that is the promissory note. For a promissory note the parties to the promissory note is number one the maker and second is the pay. That means there is no third individual in a promissory note. What are the essentials of a promissory note? The first and foremost being that it should be in writing, there should be a promise to pay. That promise to pay should be unconditional, that means there should not be any qualifications attached to that promise. It should certainly be signed by the maker. And that maker, that is the person who is signing it, should be a certain person. The other conditions are the pay should also be a certain person because a promissory note is a promise to pay 
a certain sum of money to a certain person. Therefore, the pay should also be marked with certainty. The sum should be certain, legal tender money should be paid and the time of payment should be noted and few other formalities like the format being dated, signed etc. have to be there. The next kind of negotiable instrument under section 5 is the bill of exchange. A bill of exchange is an instrument in writing containing an unconditional order signed by the maker directing a certain person to pay on demand or at fixed or determinable future time a certain sum of money only to or to the order of a certain person or to the bearer of the instrument. Therefore, from this definition we can find out that there has to be a person who has made the instrument that is the drawer of the instrument who is directing another person that is the drawer of the instrument to make a certain sum of money available either to himself or to the payee named on that instrument. Hence, there could be two or three parties to that instrument which is the bill of exchange. Also, there is an order or a direction to pay. Unlike the promissory note, there is no promise. There is an order to make the payment. Now, let us discuss the essentials of the bill of exchange. For a bill of exchange to be valid, it has to be in writing, there has to be an order to pay, the order should be unconditional, it should be signed by the drawer, drawer has to be a certain person, the time of payment should be stated, certain sum of money should be there, it should be a legal tender of money, pay has to be a certain person and a few other formalities like the date being mentioned, place being mentioned, lawful consideration and a revenue stamp. That is, the bill of exchange has to be made on a stamp paper. The third kind of negotiable instrument mentioned under the definition of section 13 of the Negotiable Instrument Act is check. The definition of check is given under section 6 which has undergone a few amendment which shall be discussed in this session itself. Now under the original definition, a check is a bill of exchange drawn on a specified banker and not expressed to be made payable otherwise than on demand. The parties to the check are the drawer that is the person who is drawing the check, then is the drawy that is the specifically being a banker and pay. Under the amendment to the Negotiable Instrument Act 1881, the definition of check has undergone a change. Now it includes even the electronic image of a truncated check and a check in electronic form. To discuss this, for the purpose of this section, the expression a check in electronic form means a check which contains the exact mirror image of a paper check and is generated, written and signed in a secure system ensuring the minimum safety standards with the use of digital signature and asymmetric crypto system. That means, just the way a normal paper check looks, exactly the same check which is called as the mirror image will be generated under a system, a computerized system and the same can be signed by the maker of the check through his digital signature certificate which is like a pen drive when attached to a PC or a laptop and after putting your password, you can digitally sign the instrument 
and it is accepted online for the payment. Now, let us discuss the truncated check. A truncated check would mean a check which is truncated during the course of the clearing cycle either by the clearing house or by the bank whether paying or receiving payment immediately on generation of electronic image for transmission substituting the further physical movement of the check in writing. Now, under the normal clearing system of a check, all the banks collect the checks which are marked for payment through another branch or through another bank. They have designated days for collecting all the checks and these checks then go to the clearing house to be cleared and individually the banks accounts with the clearing house are either debited or credited. Under the truncation of check system, now this time consuming exercise has been done away with and instead the check is scanned through the scanning machine and the check is thereby truncated. That means now that physical movement of the check will not be done and only the electronic image of the check shall move from the bank to the clearing house and the clearing house will then accordingly act by debiting or crediting the account of that respective bank. Now, there could be certain instances in which a fraud is suspected and in those cases uh, this physical check is also saved and can be resorted to confirmed to see whether everything was ok uh, while clearing that check. Now, let us discuss the different kinds of checks. There are three kinds of checks, the first one being the bearer check, second is order checks and the third one is cross check. The cross checks and their collection being discussed in this slide. Crossing means drawing of two parallel transverse lines across the checks. In a generalized crossing, only two parallel lines are drawn and the check is said to be crossed generally. In the specimens that you can see in uh, part A, B and C, two simple lines are drawn which means it is a general crossing without addition of any word. In the second kind, we have a representative that is uh, and company being written over there that means a parallel traverse line along with and company being mentioned and in the third one pays account only that is there is a specific instruction to credit the pays account only. All the three fall into the generalized crossing uh, of the check. Let us discuss the specialized crossing. Specialized crossing is when the name of the bank has been mentioned. Therefore, that means that the check can be collected only through that specific bank. For example, consider A. Over here, ABC bank has been mentioned. That means the person who is collecting the check, that is who has been made as the pay on the check will need his account to be opened in ABC bank and then only he can withdraw the sum. Consider for example, the second one that is WWW bank. Now, in this again a different bank's name is mentioned. The pay needs to have a bank account in this particular bank to get the credit to his account. In the third one, XYZ Bank Limited Lahore branch. Now, in this the name of the bank has been mentioned plus which branch uh, the person needs to have an account is also mentioned. That means, it is specially crossed with the, even the branch being mentioned. Now, uh, we need to discuss uh, why would a person cross a check specially by mentioning the name of the bank also. Sometimes the person who is drawing the check has a certain licensing 
and needs to know uh, whether the proceeds have gone particularly properly into the account of the person mentioned because there could be a duplication of names and the check might move into the hands of the person who is not intended to be the recipient of the check. With this mentioning of the name of the bank on the check, there is a certainty element which is attached to whom the proceeds will be paid. Now let us discuss the distinguishing features between what is a promissory note and a bill of exchange so that we have a clear cut view of what are promissory notes and what are bill of exchange. In a promissory note, the person who makes the promissory note is the debtor. That is, he is a person who owes money to another person. In a bill of exchange, the drawer is the creditor and the drawee would be the debtor. Since the drawer is ordering the drawee to make payment either to himself or to the payee mentioned on the bill of exchange. In the second difference, the maker and payee are different people. That means in a promissory note, the person who makes the promissory note and the payee will be different. In a bill of exchange, the drawer and payee may be the same. When we had done the definition of the bill of exchange, we had discussed that there could be two parties or there could be three parties. That is the drawer, drawee and payee. The drawer can give specific instructions or order to the drawee bank or to the drawee to make the payment either to himself or to the person marked as the payee. And in that case, the payee could also be the drawer himself. In under the third difference, there needs to be at least two parties in the promissory note, but in a bill of exchange, there could be two or three parties. Under a promissory note, there will be always an unconditional promise to pay, but in a bill of exchange, it will always contain an order to make the payment. A promissory note does not need to be accepted because it is made by the promiser himself. But in a bill of exchange, it must be accepted by the joy. The next difference for promissory note, the liability of the maker is primary and unconditional because he is the sole debtor and the maker of the promissory note. But in a bill of exchange, the liability of the drawer is primary till acceptance by the drawee. A promissory note cannot be drawn in set because promissory note is drawn in original and it is given to the person who is promised the payment. But for a bill of exchange, it can be drawn in sets. All the sets together will make one bill of exchange. If the original set has been accepted, then all the remaining leaves on the sets will lie cancelled. Let us also distinguish between a check and a promissory note. When we discuss the check, in that the drawer is a creditor, he must have an account in the bank so that he can instruct his joy bank to make the payment to the pay. Whereas in a promissory note, the maker is the debtor, he owes some money to another person. In a check, there will necessarily be three parties, but in a promissory note, there shall be only two parties. In a check, it will contain an order to the joy bank to make the payment. Whereas in a promissory note, it will always contain a promise to pay. In the case of a check, it is always payable on demand. 
that means whenever the check is presented towards the draw bank the draw bank is obliged to make the payment preferably when the check is not stale and it does not suffer from any infirmities or any problems as stated for the dishonor of check in the case of promissory note it is payable on demand or on a fixed date or determinable future time now let us have a clear understanding of the promissory note by discussing a few examples i acknowledge myself to be indebted to b in rupees 1000 to be paid on demand for value received now this is a typical example of a promissory note in this the person is acknowledging himself to be indebted to b a certain sum of money that is rupees 1000 is also mentioned also it is mentioned that it will be payable on demand that is on a stated time for the value received that is why the indebtedness is created is also mentioned that means we can consider this as a valid promissory note other formalities of signing and properly Uh, put into writing being already assumed now let's discuss the second example mr b i owe you rupees 500 now in this example there is mere acknowledgement that mr b i am owing you rupees 500 the promise to pay is certainly absent in this example hence it is not a valid promissory note Let's discuss the third example. I am bound to pay the sum of rupees five hundred, which I received from you. Over here again, there is just an acknowledgement. The promise to pay is absent in this example. The person to whom the payment is to be made is also not mentioned. In the fourth example. I promise to pay B rupees five hundred and all other sums which shall be due to him. In this example, there is a promise to pay. Assuming the person who has made the instrument has signed it, the person to whom the payment is to be made, that is Mr. B, is also certain. The amount being rupees five hundred and all other sums. now 500 is certainly legal tender of money which will be paid but there is ambiguity with regard to all other sums that could be due now it could be 5000 it could be 10000 or any other sum of money which could be due to him hence the negotiability of this promissory note will uh, be affected because the person who is accepting the promissory note will not know how much money that promissory note represents now let us discuss a few examples of bill of exchange pay to x or order the sum of 10000 rupees for a bill of exchange there needs to be an order by the person who is drawer and the order will be to a drawee who needs to be a certain person and the amount should also be certain now let's see whether all these conditions are satisfied in this over here we assume that the person who is signing is a certain person so he is indicating to the person who is the drawee that the payment should be made to mr x who is the pay the sum should be 10000 and there is specifically an order to make the payment now this satisfies all the conditions of the bill of exchange hence it is a proper bill of exchange let's consider another example to anderson dear sir we hereby authorize you to pay on our account to the order of wolf a sum of 6000 rupees again over here we find that uh, this is a drawer who has mentioned it to mr anderson Who is the joy? 
to make a payment of 6000 rupees to the pay Mr. Wolf. Again, it satisfies all the conditions of the bill of exchange, hence it is a valid bill of exchange. In our session today, we had discussed about the definitions of various kinds of negotiable instruments being the promissory note under section 4, bill of exchange under section 5 and check under section 6. We had also discussed the amendment being made to the definition of check. Also we had discussed the distinguishing features by comparing the various kinds of negotiable instrument that is promissory note the bill of exchange and the check. With this, we conclude our today's session. Thank you.